good morning and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass on this 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. We extend a warm welcome to all who may be visiting today. If you are looking for a parish community, we would be happy to have you become a part of our parish family. Please check that your cell phone is off as we are about to begin the Holy Mass with hymn number 387, the summons number 387. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We welcome you on this very special and significant day in the life of the Catholic community in Portsmouth. A native son, the first to respond to the Lord's call from the new parish of Corpus Christi, but whose roots go long beyond that, is about to enter the seminary in response to the Lord's call. And we're here to pray with and for him, and to also have reawakened in us our own enthusiasm to respond to the diversity of vocations that fill this church, and to pray the Spirit stir up the seeds that are planted among young people in this church, that this be the first of many celebrations of sending. As I extend an invitation to all visitors and guests, I want particularly to welcome, in a very special way, Bob and Carla, Joe's parents, 
who for so many years lived out their faith as members of this community. Welcome home. Those brothers, family, friends, all who have come here, we extend a warm welcome to you as you come to celebrate what God and his goodness does. And so my brothers and sisters, recognizing that the Lord, Lord calls each of us, and sometimes we turn a deaf ear, let us be repentant. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament. You strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. O 
God, who will to provide shepherds for your people, pour out in your church a spirit of piety and fortitude, to raise up worthy ministers for your altars, and make them ardent yet gentle heralds of your gospel, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Scripture readings today have been specifically chosen uh, and are not those found in your worship aids. A reading from the book of Samuel. During the time young Samuel was minister to the Lord under Eli, a revelation of the Lord was uncommon and vision infrequent. One day Eli was asleep in his usual place. His eyes had grown uh, weak lately and he could not see. The lamp of God was not yet extinguished. And Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel who answered, here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said, go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the scroll of the book it says, 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes from faith in Christ, the righteousness from God. Depending on faith, to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue to pursue in hope that I may possess it since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At that statement his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. And sometimes the greatest possession that keeps us from following 
is what we're holding on to as our vision, as our way, as our plan, or our weakness, our sin, our faults, our excuses. Those become that thing that we won't give. And we think somehow that God's smile, that God's grace is out there waiting for when we get it right. Well, if we think it, then brothers and sisters, we haven't listened to the gospel. Because look at this young man, feeling that inside call. And the gospel tells us that Jesus, looking at him, loved him. He loved him. He loved him when he was on the way, not when he was arriving. He loved him. And it's because of that love that he couldn't turn the deaf ear to the call. What about the first reading? Young Samuel. Hearing this, is it this? Is it that? Is it here? Is it, you call me, you call me, you call me? Finally, just say, here I am, Lord. Samuel didn't know at first that it was the Lord. We take from that reading God's persistence. In season, out of season, whether listened to, whether coaxed, whether pushed. And then what about this letter to the Philippians? I consider everything is lost. For his sake I've accepted the loss of all things. I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, having no righteousness on my own, not earned, not deserved. It all comes through Christ. And then Paul goes on to say, it's not like I already got it. I haven't attained perfect maturity, but I'm pursuing it in hope that I may possess it because I've been taken hold of by Christ. At the rite of an ordination of a priest, after the gospel is read, everybody sits. And this is how the ordination rite begins. A name is called out in the cathedral church. First, middle, and last. And the candidate for ordination stands up and says, present. And little does he know that he just gave to everybody the job description for the rest of his life. By the bedsides of the dying, along with the couple who find out they can't conceive, with those suffering the breakdown of a marriage, with those riddled by addiction, and the list could go on and on and on, sharing the joys of newlyweds, reconciling sinners who thought mercy was impossible. When they're welcomed, when they're hated, when they're rejected, when they're criticized, when they're longed for, when they can't take it away and all they can do is share the tears, over and over and over again, a priest has to say, present, present, I'll be there. I'll be there. Because if I'm not there, Christ and his church won't be there. And in the person of Christ, he is present. And on that ordination day, he's not asked to show his grade point average, although I suggest Joe studies a little bit. <laughs> not asked to have an opinion poll of popularity, not asked about his past and his record. Nope. It's all God's gift. And he just has to be 100% present to receive it. Over this past year and a half plus, our brother has sought to be present to the Lord in a very unique way. The scriptures that you just heard, Joe selected. The persistence of God who calls, not looking back, but looking ahead, considering all else rubbish. And the young man who has seen the Lord look upon him with love. And so rather than my speaking any more words to make these words that you've heard of the scriptures flesh, I invite him now to share his witness with us on this significant day. Good morning. Don't worry, the next 45 minutes will fly by while I talk. <laughs> I want to begin by expressing my gratitude firstly to God for bringing me to this moment. As some of you may know, this journey of mine began in this church. Just over here, I was baptized. It was at this altar that I gathered around to receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. 
And it was in that clo- the room, not a closet, over there that I first encountered God's mercy. It was here on this altar that my brothers and I served as altar servers. And it was here during my early years that I was first attracted to be his priest. Next, I want to express my gratitude to mom and dad. Without your yes to each other and therefore to God, I wouldn't be here. My vocation wouldn't be. Thank you for all the sufferings that you endured. Your yes brought about three lives that you raised, loved, and sacrificed so much for. And I can't thank you enough, Mom and Dad, for the greatest gift you have given me, which is this Catholic faith. While at times I didn't always appreciate it, now I'm at a point where words don't describe my love for it and therefore my love for God. So thank you. I want to thank this parish community too for all their support. We were in the choir in the sweat box, singing, making this liturgy beautiful. Looking ahead, I know there will be lots of challenges, but I can look to you, Mom and Dad, as an example. Dad, where you decided to change your vocation midway through life. Everyone said it couldn't be done. Even you said that. Working two to three jobs, being a husband, a father, and going to school. And Mom, how you were stuck with three rambunctious boys entering their teenage years, and how much you sacrificed while Dad was in transition. I mentioned I wanted to be a priest when I was a little boy. Sometimes I'd even say I wanted to be a saint. (laughs) (laughs) But as I grew older, I was more uncertain about it. I didn't understand it. It seemed weird and almost unnatural. I didn't want to be ridiculed. I wanted to be cool and have friends. So the last thing to do or say, especially going to public school and with friends who didn't really have a faith background would be to say and stand out, I think I want to be a priest. As high school went along, I decided to minister to people in another way, whether medicine or nursing. I moved to Indiana. I got my undergraduate degree in nursing. And I would find in the midst of studies or relationships that there was still a quiet whisper and the faintest desire of the priesthood. This even happened at various times after college, whether I was drawing closer to our Lord or pushing him away. He was continually calling me. But much like the rich young man, I couldn't lay it all down. I was too afraid. I was too afraid to let go of these things that were possessing me. I came to New England in 2011. At that point in my life, I was becoming more and more lost in creation and losing sight of the Creator. My life was about me. I was my own God. And in doing so, I hurt other people. And myself. Very similar to St. Augustine before his conversion, if that gives you any insight. So during that time, I would still hear interiorly, despite where I was in my faults and my failures, the priesthood. I would disqualify myself. I would say, Lord, you've heard my confession, right? I can't do this. There's no way I'm qualified. I say confession, it's very important to me because it was through the confessional that I met Father Gary. And shortly thereafter, we began to meet occasionally for spiritual direction. It was in the confessional he made the comment of, I'm getting a sense from you of, Lord, make me holy, but not yet. What I had said without his knowing. So we worked on being a better Catholic man with integrity, being the same guy Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and even Friday and Saturday night. As time went on and I cultivated this, I authentically began to seek God. Who is he? What does the church mean? What do serious theologians and intellectual people mean when they say God? Providentially, I stumbled upon a few things, one of which was a video by a Father Robert Barron, priest out of Chicago. It's a short video on who God is and who God is not. The video enthralled me. It satiated me but it made me hungry for more. I began to seek things such as like St. Thomas Aquinas, but he's a very, very dense author and one you can't really casually read. 
I came across another book called Theology for Beginners, and I brought that with me on a retreat with Father Gary that we went on to a monastery in Spencer, Massachusetts. There I made a general life confession, talked about redemption and the newness of life that Christ brings, how a person is not the sum total of their failures. Their past does not define them. We talked about the unrelenting mercy and love of God. And it was towards the end of that retreat, I was praying and reading that book that I had mentioned, and all of a sudden, there was an overwhelming sense of God. In an instant, he was real. He was with me, he was in me, he was sustaining me, he was, he was there. I can't adequately describe it with words, but there was this ecstasy and peace that I had never known. When I think back, I remember my face was hurting because I was smiling for like a week. Like St. Paul said, everything else was rubbish. There is this new hope. But then I discovered, well, if just knowing him brings about this much change, this much more life to my life, how much more fulfilling, how much more peace, how much more freedom will there be if I do what he wants me to do? So, I consecrated my vocation and my process to the Blessed Mother. Why not, right? It was through her that Christ came to us. No other human person fulfilled their vocation more perfectly than her. So I was hopeful she would intercede for me because knowing the type of person I am, I need all the help I can get. So it was through her that I would seek him. I then discussed with Father Gary that I was going to give our Lord and myself a year, a year to show me beyond a shadow of a doubt that he did not want me to be a priest because otherwise I would then begin the application process for the seminary. Interestingly enough, at that time, the lease of where I was living was coming to an end and I was driving to Mass, didn't know what to do, where I should live, where I should go. Said a prayer to Our Lady, Upon arriving to church, Father Gary presented the idea of Nazareth House. It was approved by the bishop, and I moved in on the Feast of the Annunciation. And I stayed there for a year, and over that time, I took a closer look at my vocation. We began meeting more frequently with spiritual direction, weekly instead of monthly or haphazardly, to really listen and hear and see with clarity what God wanted of me. It was cultivating a deeper relationship with our Lord through prayer, the sacraments, the mass, adoration, acts of charity, increasing virtue and decreasing vice. I noticed that I would spend more time in the chapel or praying or reading and less time distracting myself with TV, my phone, Facebook, trying to play in every moment of my day because I couldn't bear the beauty of silence. And it was through this process there came a cultivated deeper sense of peace, happiness, joy, and freedom. It's, it's authentic. Jesus says, by their fruits you shall know them. Things that were a struggle for me are gone. They become moments to, to praise God and give thanks. There's been affirmations. Around Thanksgiving time, there was a patient who I was taking care of while I was working in the hospital. His heart valve had ruptured, and he was dying. Amidst the chaos of taking care of him, I recognized him as a parishioner, he and his wife. I was able to have a moment with him as he was struggling to breathe, and I asked him if he had received the Blessed Sacrament that morning while he was in the hospital, and he said no, he was too short of breath. I encouraged him to make a spiritual communion with our Lord, to unite his suffering, his dying process, with our Lord on the cross. And that was the last thing he did before he died. And it was that encounter that left me with a major confirmation of what I'd been feeling, to bring Jesus to people. Here was this beautiful moment of ministering to people to heal them physically and then spiritually. And I saw the beauty of ministering to people spiritually in that role. There was another moment um, 
after I had visited my parents for Christmas out in Indiana. They made a small passing comment, which they might not remember, but they said, Joe, something's different. You've changed, you're not the same Joe. But I kinda like it, it's good. Now that might have been said as a passing comment because I wasn't glued to my phone, the TV or whatever, but that gave me a moment to reflect and say, yes, I have. By their fruits you shall know them, right? And when I came back, I decided I would start the application process for the seminary because in my estimation, because of these affirmations, living at Nazareth House, I couldn't make any more fruitful discernment outside of the seminary. Then on the day I resigned from nursing, which was a bittersweet day, I loved my job, I loved what I did, I loved serving people in that way. I was able to have mass with Father Gary here at the high altar. All that bitterness, the bittersweetness rather, the questioning of what am I doing was washed away in an ocean of consolation and peace. Primarily when I heard the communion antiphon which was, it was not you who chose me, but I who chose you. I was overwhelmed. Like I said I was lost in an ocean of peace and joy and love. There was a profound sense of humility. I knew that this is what he wanted for me, and therefore, it is what I desire. I was overcome with a sense of, who am I? You know, who am I that despite what I've done, what I did to him and others, he still forgave me and offered out this great gift. And it was then that I said, the heck have I been so afraid of? What was I running from and what was I running to? What was I clinging to thinking that gave me security, that that was, that was joy, that was pleasure, for cheap imitations? I mentioned when I began all this, I placed it in Mary's hands. I think it's more than interesting that I was accepted by our bishop as a seminarian on the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. I begin seminary on the feast of Our Lady of Chetstohova, which is this Wednesday. Some of you might remember a year ago to the day, there was three young people. A young man named Bobby LeBlanc lives in York and did spiritual direction with Father Gary, worked at BC, uncertain of his vocation. Shannon Marshall, our former youth minister who was preparing to enter religious life, and myself basically consecrating our de decision to Our Lady. And a year later, the three of us are entering religious formation. Shannon is entering her novitiate. Bobby and I are entering the same day, a year later, to begin our priestly formation. So some of you might wonder where I'm at now. Well, if you haven't been able to tell from me talking, I'm, I'm happy. I'm at peace. There's a joy and a newness of life. But the one thing I am not, I am not afraid. I am resolved to do his will, to give witness to Jesus Christ and the great mercy and love of God, to witness to the hope of the resurrection, to bear witness that God is calling each and every one of us to himself, and to quote from the book of Song of Songs, he says, Behold, he stands at the door of our hearts, and looking through the lattice, he says, Arise, make haste, my love, my dove, my beautiful one, and come. Come, my beautiful spouse, for you have wounded my heart with love. Do not be afraid, for it is I. St. John Paul II reminds us, there is an invitation to enter more deeply into the Christian vocation which belongs to us all by baptism. There is no evil to be faced that Christ does not face with us. There is no enemy that Christ has not already conquered. There is no cross to bear that Christ has not already borne for us and does not now bear with us. And on the far side of every cross, we find the newness of life in the Holy Spirit.
that new life which will reach its fullness in the resurrection. So I close using the words of one of the greatest saints of this past century. Young people, have you ever thought of committing your existence to Christ? Do you think that there can be any greater thing than to bring Jesus to people and people to Jesus? The greatest deception and deepest source of unhappiness is the illusion of finding your life by excluding God, by finding freedom by excluding moral truth and personal responsibility. So I beg you, my brothers and sisters, look to Christ. Do not be afraid. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confident hearts, we bring ourselves, we bring our needs to God. For the church, may we be authentic witnesses by our daily choices that reveal that we are committed to serving the Lord and not allowing anything or any desires to become the strange gods placed before him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, may their lives authentically reflect the relationship Jesus has with his church one that is faithful and fruitful, unconditional and unto death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our seminarian Joe, as we send him forth to begin seminary formation, may he know the support of our prayers and be filled with the Spirit as he seeks to grow deeper in his relationship with the Lord and respond to the Lord's invitation to shepherd his people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all, the Lord is inviting to church ministry. Patiently and lovingly, may they have the courage to pause, listen, and explore that call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those who live in turmoil and anxiety, for all who have asked for our prayers, for all in need of the healing that only God's mercy can bring, that no one ever consider themselves beyond God's desire to forgive, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For all government leaders, may the needs of the most vulnerable and easily overlooked be given priority in their plans and policies, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all our relatives, friends, and benefactors who have gone before us in death, especially Carl and Ania, for whom this Mass is offered. May they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All this we ask in trusting faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please join together in singing hymn number 376, servant song number 376.
brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Look kindly, we pray, O Lord, on the prayers and offerings of your people, that the stewards of your mysteries may grow in number and persevere always in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest, of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's love, he chooses men to become sharers in his sacred mystery through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and to offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, and in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Mary, Virgin Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all of the saints who plead you throughout the ages, might merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, I praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Before we conclude, I knew this was going to be a prolonged weekend celebration since we haven't been blessed with air conditioning yet. Uh, I asked the Lord to turn on the natural one. So we're grateful for that. He went a little overboard, but I see he stopped it because so many of you brought things. Go outside after Mass, linger, have some refreshments, or you're waiting to personally uh, greet and uh, wish well our seminarian Joe. Joe will be out on the plaza. He'll be in the center. I'll be off on the side eating a cookie or something today. <laughs> so thanks to everybody for that. Thanks to the members of our music ministry. Who, would, who, no, who wouldn't want to go on a day like this and clean your attic? Well, that's what it's like to go up in that choir loft on a day like this. So thank you, everybody. And I want to thank Joe, uh, who selected all of the music. And uh, hopefully, by every word that we sing, you are experiencing the message of this day. Listen especially to that closing hymn that we're going to sing, because that really says it all powerfully. I just want to make two quick comments before we bless Joe. In just a couple of weeks, it'll be four years since I came here. And I stood right here on that September 8th and consecrated my pastorate and this parish to Our Lady. And remember I told you that get ready to be surprised by what she does. If God chose to enter the world through Mary, he's going to continually work through Mary and enter the world through those who are devoted to her. And so as Joe said, Wednesday will be one year that Bobby, Joe, and Shannon stood right there in front of that icon and gave it to Mary, told us to us. Wednesday night is the feast, 7 o'clock. I hope you're going to be here. Wednesday night, it's in the bulletin. We'll mark the year to the day. Shannon's about ready to enter novitiate. She's been in formation for almost a year. Bobby and Joe will be in their first hours at St. John's Seminary. I want to make one point. If you don't have a devotion to Mary, get with it. How blind can you be? You can never love Mary too much because you'll never love her more than Jesus did. She has done great things in our midst. And I hope this celebration underscores that for all of us because she teaches us what it means to be a disciple who steps out in faith. So that's one. Two, I want to thank you because I stood here and told you that if we activate Eucharistic adoration, if we create a climate that is conducive, if we pray and pray and pray some more for vocations, I told you there were seeds in this community and they would begin to sprout up. And so all I want to say to that is, I told you so. <laughs> Carol got it before I even said it. I told you so. And there are more. There are some in this church right now. And there are more. So let's pray and work more than ever before. So I thank you for that. I want to thank Father Kelly for joining us. Father Kelly was pastor here for a number of years when Joe and his family were actively involved and Carla worked in this parish. We often talk about that. She worked next door in the rectory and when Joe was moving his stuff in, we said, who would have ever thought this would have been your home down the road when it was your mother's place of work? But um, I'm very grateful to Father Kelly for his involvement in the life of the parish. And he tells me that when uh, Joe first came back in the area, he recommended that he might want to look me up. So um, I don't know if Joe wants to thank him or curse him for that, but um, <laughs> it has been a pleasure for me. A priest doesn't give up a wife and children to become an isolated bachelor. He does it so that rather than having an exclusive love, he can have an inclusive love. And he might not biologically have children, but he has to have a paternal priesthood. And then he experiences that. I'm very proud of my son in Christ. Bob and I share something very much in common. It has been a joy for me. As a priest, the more you plant the seeds of that vocation or encourage those vocations in others, the more I think you become younger in your vocation. This year has been such a great experience for me. I think I'm about four years away from ordination. I've gone back that far. <laughs> so let's continue to be open to all the Lord does for us. And please know I am so proud of you for the community you are and for making this place fertile soil for vocations. So enough of that. It's time to uh, do the bittersweet, as Joe put it. 
to send him forth, to look forward to his back on various occasions and holidays. But before we do that, I would like to make some presentations to him from all of us. So Joe? We're blessed in the parish. Denise Brown is a wonderful watercolor artist. A number of years ago, when the parish of Immaculate Conception was celebrating 150 years, she did this beautiful watercolor that depicts this church, the church in which Joe was baptized, shared in the Eucharist, and made his first confession, the church he spent so much time in, and the rectory, which is now Viani House, which is now where he hangs his hat. And so Joe, hopefully, no matter where you go, Somebody the other day said, if you look at a picture of newly ordained Fulton Sheen or John Paul II, he looks like him. <laughs> I just said, well, may he preach as well as Fulton Sheen, and if he gets where John Paul II did, I'm glad I'm nice to him now. <laughs> uh, so wherever you go, this is to remind you of where you come from. You. Hang in your room and know that we're with you. Nobody has a vocation to be a seminarian. Never. Ever. Believe me. Some days less than others. It's the vocation to priesthood. And what gets somebody through all the tough times is the remembrance of why they're doing it. The last, I told you about the first word at the ordination rite. Present. Showing up. Being there. We pray that you will be present to the Lord in your years of formation, with your mind to the academics, to your brothers and community. Present. But the last words of the ordination rite is, model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross. It's going to cost you, as it cost him. And so, Joseph, please hang this in your room, and may you be ever faithful until you hear those words six years from now. Nazareth House. <laughs> Nazareth House, as you know, was in the former rectory of, of St. Catherine Parish. Monsignor Larry Burns gave many years of his life to the Catholic community here in Portsmouth. We erected a shrine to St. John Vianney shortly after I came. Little prayer cards for Joe and for vocations will be found there, and in a few days, his picture will be there at the foot of St. John Vianney. We wanted to give Joe an image of this holy priest who's the patron of priests and seminarians. And rather than just one store-bought, many years ago when he had the occasion to go to ours, Monsignor had this beautiful wood-carved statue of St. John Vianney at prayer. We wish to give it to you. And lastly, not being satisfied with an image of John Vianney, we would like to give you St. John Vianney himself, and it's my pleasure to present to you this first-class relic from the bones of St. John Marie Vianney. Now please extend your right hand and join me in the blessing. Lord God, you called the prophets of old as witnesses to your power active in the lives of your faithful people. Bless this man as he leaves for seminary formation. Guide and direct his path that he may continue to respond to your will in his life. And give all of us a double portion of your spirit. Enliven and encourage us to call forth vocations from our families and from our community. Give depth and persistence to our prayer for him and all men in formation and those discerning. Fill the heart of your servant with the Holy Spirit in these years of formation that he might be drawn ever closer to you and then bring you ever more closer to your people. May he show his gratitude for the mercy you've given him by being a merciful confessor. And may he not only one day take bread and wine and transform them into your son's body and blood, but may his very life, beginning now, become evermore the very body and blood of Christ, a witness of his power, his love, and his joy. 
May the blessing of Almighty God come upon him to remain forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. May God hold you in the hollow, in the hollow of his hand. Go in peace and go with our love, brother. God bless you. Let us pray. Renewed with the bread of the heavenly table, we entreat you, O Lord, that through the sacrament of charity, the seeds you sow with great abundance in the field of your church may come to maturity, so that many may make it their choice in life to serve you and their brothers and sisters. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join together in singing hymn number 544, O God Beyond All Praising, number 544.